system. Um, MAW0001 here with my <laughs> fifth instalment of Comic Book Stew. <sighs> and thank you Swedish Chef, or rather impersonation of Swedish Chef, because I don't want to get sued by Disney. So, um, yes, uh, started off here with Avengers Assemble, which was the short-lived Marvel Mangaverse sort of like maxi series that they brought out when they just transferred all the Marvel superheroes into manga style just Marvel basically cashing on the manga anime hype that was going on you know, about about ten years ago or so around the world and I didn't think it was that bad actually I thought it was a quite a good little interesting little sort of like concept but you know, a lot of people didn't like it, but then I suppose a lot of people didn't like the Clone Saga either, but, you know. Everyone has their own different opinion and tastes. And next up, Vamps Hollywood and Vain, issue 4. As you probably saw in the last video, we had the rest of these. I told you it was all mixed up, I did warn you. And this was, this was a really interesting series, actually. I really enjoyed reading it. I didn't get all of them, but I, I, I did read a lot of them. And it's Terry Moore's Echo, number five. Not to be confused with the comic called Echoes, which I keep on raving about to Ghost Critic and everybody as well, um, which was brought out by Image, which is a five-issue miniseries. And this is a weird little black-and-white comic that I picked up somewhere, I'm sure, called Wolf and Batsy. And it's from Viper Comics, issue 3, and it's, uh, da, 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 that was about 2008, I think it was, it's not that old. Interesting cover there. This is one of the, uh, this is one of those comics, next one up, is one of those comics that DC brought out, that I think I actually got the whole series, and I didn't even read it all. And it, it's the DC Trinity series. And, yeah, I was one of those ones that bought it, read the first ten or so issues, and then I just ended up getting the whole lot. Um, and I, did, I don't even think I've read the last issue of it, because it, it, it just bored me after the first ten or so issues. And we've got here. This is Wildstorm's mini-series, and it's the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Raising Cain. Issue three of three. And we go Squadron Supreme number four. The reimagining of it. Ultimate X Men number ninety two, the original series. From Top Cow and Virgin Comics we have Witchblade and Devi. This is cover A. That's a one off, one shot that way. And this is. This one was brought out when they brought out the first X Men movie, I believe. Yeah, there were a whole set, I think about three or four of them they made. And this is these are two of them. This is X Men the movie prequel. This is this, the backstory for Rogue. And this one is the Wolverine one. And I think they did a Magneto one. And I can't remember if it was a Cyclops or Professor X one they did. But these were, these were just basically go, to go into the backstories of the characters before you actually saw the movie. And here we go. Young X-Men number four. Okay, this is a this next one is a mini series that I quite enjoyed. I I've got all the original 
um, series of this one. This is the DC Comics Tangent Comics, and this was in when they they basically took the names of the characters like Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Power Girl, but that was the only thing that was you know, synonymous with the character. Everything else about the character has completely changed. And this is the Tangent Superman's Reign. This was issue 8 of 12. Which I think is basically... It was to bring in the Tangent Universe into the whole 52 Universe thing that they decided to bring out for some reason. And what have we got here? Just the... Oh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant story arc from Mark Miller. This is Wolverine, oh, Old Man Logan. This is from the Wolverine series number 69. And this is part two, yeah. part four of Old Man Logan. Absolutely brilliant story arc. If you haven't got this, see if you can pick it up in trade. It's absolutely fantastic. And this is the I believe this is the what happened. Is it? What no, so is it there? Sorry, talk amongst yourself whilst I figure out what this is. This is the reprint, the 2000, 2009 reprint of Watchmen number one to coincide with the release of the Watchmen movie. Go. Final Crisis, Resist. find out what issue number it is. Oh, that's right, it was a one-shot, wasn't it? Yeah. Final Crisis number one. Resist. That's cover A, and that's cover B. Yes, I was the person who bought all the covers for the Final Crisis series, mini-series, and one-shots and all that as well. Yes, it was me, I admit it. I think the only one I haven't got was the Legions of Three Worlds issue one. I think it's the one with lightning lad on. I'm missing that one, but I'm sure I'll find it somewhere. And here we have from is it Ape Entertainment? Sorry, Antarctic Press. So uh, from Antarctic Press, Fire and Brimstone, Brimstone number one. Nice little funny comic there. Thor, God size, one shot. Yeah, Tiny Titans, number 11, you go. X-Files, number 2. This was the first, I think it was, uh, yes, X-Files, number two. the first miniseries of the X-Files, I believe. There we have Hulk, number 6, the variant cover from Michael Turner. And Swamp Thing number 36. And Swamp Thing number 35. And I think 36, 35 and 36 were, are the best Swamp Thing comics that are out there. If you only read two comics of the Alan Moore and Swamp Thing, read 35 and 36. It is absolutely brilliant. It's about um, a guy, a, a, a vagrant, a tramp who ends up eating or coming into contact with toxic waste and he becomes the opposite of Swamp Thing, if you will. He looks relatively normal you know, until you get up close to him and you see his sort of skin's melting and that. But everywhere he walks, plants die, people he touch end up end up um, dying as well and having cancer and, and all that stuff. And yeah, it's a really, really cool two issue two issue story like that is from Swamp Thing. Right. And for the next bundle. Yeah. Ah oh, cool. Green Lantern, the original series well, the second series, the Hell the original Hell Jordan series. 
Green Lantern number 199. Swamp Thing number 34 with an absolutely gorgeous painted cover there. Oh, this is brilliant. This was a really, really, really funny mini series from, from DC Vertigo. Haunted Tank. That's number four. And we have Final Crisis number three, which is cover A. Oh, excellent. They're all in here, I've got to look at it. Uh, Amazing Man number nine. Number eight. Number five. This is Superman number three, which is a Legend Legends crossover. Chapter thirteen. Dark Side beating Superman, or does he? Uh, more Amazing Man issue eleven. A free comic book day from Oni Press. 2009 Resurrection free comic book day is an absolutely brilliant idea if there's one thing that's going to get people into comic book shops is going to be free comic book day more than anything that DC or Marvel are ever going to do any any amount of reboots DC do or any amount of things that Marvel do the thing that's really going to get people interested in comics I reckon is free comic book day it's just that it needs to be advertised more in the media in the wide you know wider media to get people into it but there you go and this one is the star lord special edition number one and this one reprints the i think it reprints anyway reprints the i'm sure it does it reprints the issues that were made from Marvel Premiere. I can't remember what numbers they were. There you go. Nice little wraparound cover there. What do we have here? A uh, fairly tatty, so definitely only reader's copy, but still okay. Copy of Spider Woman number 20 with the British Pence cover variant on it. And another pretty tatty, but still okay. Spider Woman number 23. Oh, yep, yeah. from the pages of the unfortunately now, now defunct Power Girl comic, we have Terror number one. Remember, they tried to reintroduce the character of Terror into the DC Universe. And here we have Trinity number 43. Don't ask me what's going on in it. I don't know, I didn't read it all. I've got the complete set, and possibly one day when I'm really bored and I've nothing else to do, I might sit down and read all 52 issues of it, but chances are I won't, because it really bored the hell out of me after the first 15 issues, and I didn't, I don't even know why I picked them all up for actually, I think it was just so I could get the complete set, you know, the, as the fanboy in this does all the time. And this is an interesting little mini-series, Superman, Supergirl, Maelstrom, issue number four. It's quite a little fun little mini series that one was. And here we have El Diablo number six. Alright, this is what's making the DC reboot so confusing. Is you have characters like Superman, Supergirl, Superboy, the Teen Titans, and the Justice League, where their histories have been changed completely. And then you have characters like Batman, Green Lantern, where their histories haven't changed at all. Um, the best part, the best one I can put that into context with is the Suicide Squad. The Suicide Squad, you have a group of villains where, from what I can tell, half of them, their, their origins have changed at some point, and half of them, like El Diablo, hasn't. That's what makes the reboot so such a confusing thing for old comic book readers. For new comic book readers, it's probably fine. But, you know, it's... There you go. <laughs> My little rant over. One of them, anyway. And we have Final Crisis number six, the sketched variant. And is this is. Is this. Ooh! Looks like this could be on mine. So we've got New Mutants number 38. Number 10. And number 39 with the Hellions in it. And 
the White Queen or Emma Frost on the cover. Just the last few more to run around, I'll just put it up there because I've just lost me Avengers Assemble, so I'll stick that one up here from the last video. Oh cool, Power Pack number one. Brilliant original story that one is. Uh, absolutely gorgeous cover. Sorry, that was my mobile phone complaining it was uh, wanting charging up. Ain't gonna get charged up there until later on. Brilliant Bernie Wrightson cover for Swamp Thing number four. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, from Wildstorm, Robotech, Love and War, issue 4. New Mutant number 9. Amazing Man number 6. The Green Lantern Corp number 205, which was originally titled Green Lantern until they changed it to Green Lantern Corp after Christ on Infinite Earth. 203, which I believe has got the first appearance of Green Lantern chip in it you know the squirrel Green Lantern Green Lantern Corpse 209 which I think is also the first appearance of the Rocket Reds Green Lantern Corp 201 211 204 a brilliant absolutely Fantastic cover, I think, for New Mutants, number 20. And finally for this issue, another really nice painted cover for New Mutants, number 19. I think New Mutants had some amazing covers for their comics when the first series came out. And, uh, yeah, absolutely gorgeous. Right, well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And, yeah, I hope you come back again for... Is it the sixth video of the comic books too. Alright. Again, thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, see you soon.